It's been about five years that we started the blockchain-based version of Sandbox, and um, we first, among our first investor, we actually have two investors from Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Hashed and we have uh, Blockor, mm -hmm. alongside like Animoca Brands, True Global Venture, and uh, Square Enix from Japan. Mm -hmm. So right from the beginning, we felt like uh, Korea was very interested in the topic of metaverse and like the platform and our vision of what we were building. And that initial sentiment has been confirmed over time as mm -hmm. We establish a team here that progressively grew to over 20 people. We have an office uh, in Gangnam and we've established over, I think we have more than 40 major uh, partners and brands uh, in our ecosystem. We have over 15 uh, creator studios uh, that have uh, been uh, using the sandbox tools to develop experiences for their brand or for themselves. I will invite you tomorrow if you can to our demo day to meet them in person and see what they are doing by the way and also like um, we've developed an extensive uh, network around education we have various uh, schools and academies who uh, are now like teaching about sandbox and the different tools for people to be prepared uh, for the skills needed by the metaverse and enter the job market among well, maybe i'll pause ha, that's yes. okay um, along the partnership, I can mention a few names like uh, we had SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, uh, Studio Dragon, we have um, Lotte World, for example, Hana Bank. Um, it's very exciting also to see like the diversity of all the industries that are present in Sandbox. And those are reflected already with two successful land sales that we had on the map. Uh, the recent, the most recent one was actually this year, a project from Korea and Korean users could become virtual neighbors and build uh, on the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to that, what I can add is like why uh, we've seen like these specific markets like so interested and so eager to partner with a platform like Sandbox. I think I can try to explain a few reasons. First, we see like uh, culture in Korea has been really uh, open to our, like uh, doing business in a rapid manner and racing technology. You've been, you know, I mean, Korea is in the top five, if not the top three countries that have like the best internet connection, the best mobile uh, penetration, have like a strong uh, creator economy culture with uh, playing video games, watching people uh, play video games. Uh, exporting your culture around like uh, K-pop, K-drama, K-tourism uh, uh, as well. And uh, it's all really uh, coming from also like um, a general public support. Like I think uh, public government have shown also strong interest in, go in uh, metaverse, even uh, like promoting its adoption, which also triggered like private businesses to move into that direction as well. Uh, Korea has been uh, also, um, I think in the top three countries around the world that adopted uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies uh, since 2018, which when Sandbox is at the intersection of gaming and uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies, that also like uh, combine all the different interests, topic of interest from Korean users and uh, we have the platform that like like makes sense for users to discover, explore, learn, and interact with. So our definition of metaverse is really uh, this idea of having like uh, an avatar that becomes a digital identity and that can access a myriad of uh, virtual worlds. So not just one, not just a sandbox alone, but many different platforms. And what's make the metaverse is the possibility for that avatar to move along. All those different platforms in a totally seamless manner. Not only the avatar itself, but also all your digital asset, the equipment, the game item, the content you created, you bought, or you earn, as well as I don't know, your virtual land, your virtual house, and so on. Yes. Um, so we have indeed like multiple partnership. The way that you um, the partnership work in Sandbox, you announce it first, then you acquire land, you organize a land sale, and then you launch one or multiple experiences on that land during events. Uh, 
we've already done all of that with several partners. I was mentioning before Lotte World. I think we uh, there was um, earlier this year an event that combined five or six different experiences from a Korean partner. But we overall we've launched hundreds of experiences on the map. Usually what we're seeing is it's still early on in general, like different uh, brands, depending on their industries, are experimenting, whether it's about like rewarding users for their engagement or like trying to introduce their first digital asset collection and sell them. But we're already seeing a few very interesting uh, success uh, KPIs for them. The first one is like users spend an average of 40 minutes to one hour into a metaverse experience, which is a lot of time when you compare that to what like the average attention time on uh, social media or watching videos online and they are not just passive in front of the content they are really moving with the avatar completing quests discovering sometimes learning more about the brand its value etc so it creates really a stronger bond with a different uh, brand content and artist some of those um, uh, uh, users, whenever they enter an experience, we notice like 95% of them go uh, complete all the quests on the map. So they really try to complete everything, uh, which is like a very strong measure of engagement. Mm -hmm. And from there, even if they didn't purchase an NFT, they will be rewarded with tokens and an NFT. So we are bringing progressively more and more audience from Web2, from those fans of those brands, into Web3, and we are building a new uh, behavior, a new way to experiment and play. We've published several case studies, uh, for example, with uh, Steve Aoki, with Paris Hilton, with Ledger. Uh, we're going to publish one with Warner Music, showcasing like how those brands globally have uh, already like exceeded their expectation by bringing over from a hundred of thousand to up to half a million users to discover that content to own an NFT, to interact for such a long time. We're going to publish uh, soon more uh, regional success case from Hong Kong, from Korea as well. We had a K-League that launched, uh, for example, into Sandbox and Experience as well. And it, it's really not, it, it's really a mix between a social um, experience and something where you learn, you educate, you complete quest. It, it's new by itself. And I think that's really, appealing like you want to try it and at the same time in korea uh, also like korean market is or has a lot of like specificities like because it's the number one gaming market it also and very focused around esports like players and audiences are more focused around competitive game and games with i would say triple a or very high quality graphics i'm thinking like uh, PUBG and we're thinking uh, about like Black Desert and also like MMORPGs or, or, or Dota games, etc. What we want to show is like there's possibility for different kind of gameplay, more casual gameplay that can attract new audiences that uh, can also touch around like just like uh, casual gaming, not just competitive gaming, exploring, sometimes creating is fun, like it's part of the game itself, uh, educating as well, like having an idea and bringing it to life without any coding. Um, so this is a little bit a different positioning of what Sandbox offers versus what the Korean gaming market has. But I think over time, and, and as we continue those partnership and launching exciting content, we will uh, progressively educate users and bring more users to Metaverse. Uh, since July 12th, so roughly a month, we indeed have uh, enabled any landowner to be able to publish directly an experiment on their lands. Uh, it's been over a month and we have already roughly 170 experiences live on the map. And we're on track to reach a thousand experiences live uh, this year, um, by end of year, and hopefully uh, much more by next year and so on. So it's really important because it starts to uh, change how a sandbox will be perceived, not only brands entering the metaverse, but user-generated content, UGC, and more and more, mm -hmm. meaning uh, going toward this vision, like metaverse will be 99% uh, uh, user-generated content and brands is uh, 1%. I think we, we have to look at really two different roles. Mm -hmm. One is like, as a creator, you own a land, you publish an experience on that land, and uh, if it's successful, you're able to engage users and you maybe make a revenue from it. 
that is not different than being like a creator or a game studio that publish an application on the App Store, Google Play Store, etc. So I wouldn't call that like play to earn. It's just like a normal way of like uh, having a business activity and uh, re making a revenue as like a professional. And I wish there would be uh, a way like to recognize that value as uh, uh, um, a job of being a creator, earning a revenue. And uh, uh, of course that revenue should be declared tax and so on. But it's not different in a way, except it's based on a platform that uses blockchain technology. We actually have uh, launched a series called New Jobs on YouTube. We already have three episodes uh, going live, telling the stories of people who've been successful creating on Sandbox and quit their previous job, which was not related to gaming or development, and now are like teaching others or uh, have been uh, really involved in the ecosystem. I'm mm. happy to share you the links after. Mm. Then I, I believe like on the player side as well, like the experience in Sandbox is, um, is also like you can play everything for free, no requirement of making any purchase to enter. And actually, if you want to be able to, uh, you, you play, you complete quest, you rank in a leaderboard, so it's skill based. And uh, if, for example, if you're in the top 10 or top 100, you can receive reward that you can claim. Those rewards are NFTs, they are digital assets you can own and potentially sell for a revenue on the marketplace. But you can also keep them, own them, and never sell them. In order to be able to claim, every user has to pass a KYC to prove that they are like adults and uh, they are a real human. So we're already putting in place the verification uh, needed uh, to prove that you are human and uh, we're working with, um, I think it's important to show like as a platform that as a global audience in Korea and 40% in Asia and rest of the world, we really want to showcase like the positive side of like how the time you spend in the game can also be potentially turned into a revenue and that how metaverse will create millions of jobs as creators, as community manager, as host, as curator, and also potentially as player. But I wouldn't call Sandbox a play to earn platform uh, per se, because there's such a diversity of activities and jobs you can do. It's almost like in, in real life. And, and um, we're seeing some countries already advancing uh, to are like recognizing those jobs as regular jobs. And I, I hope that Korea would take a similar approach so they can like enable like that uh, gen the young generation, the Gen Z, uh, but to also embrace these opportunities to become, to make like uh, playing or creating in virtual worlds a job. It's very Korea had a big advance when you look at it, like you've been uh, among the first countries that playing MMORPGs, you were already like uh, exchanging items, selling them, but it was forbidden uh, or it was gray market or it was forbidden at some point. But you somehow, I feel like you missed something here and potentially if um, the regulation actually supports rather than try to block, it could drive a more beneficial effect for the economy and the new generation here. So um, what we're seeing with Sun Token actually is uh, not exactly what you're seeing. Like we're still a top 50 cryptocurrency globally, according to CoinMarketCap, meaning like we've maintained that position top 50 over the crypto winter. So we decrease as the market decrease the Bitcoin and if there's of course that, that correlation. But we remain at that rank, meaning like we are not decreasing more than other token. And why is that? It's because uh, a few reasons. First, SAN is really a, a, a globally listed token. We're listed uh, in Korea, of course, on a bit and bit, but also in Japan. We are one of the few 20 uh, tokens approved by government, 18 tokens approved in Hong Kong by government, also in the US, on Coinbase, in Europe, in Turkey, etc. Also because like we, uh, we've shown that the platform has a concrete utility for the token, 
with like acquiring land, participating, uh, uh, buying on the marketplace, and soon the marketplace will be fully open, um, uh, and earning as you play and earn into some events. We are uh, shown like you can play experiences with your avatar, the, the platform, and the tools keep evolving. So. Um, it cr and we introduced Sandbox to new region of the world progressively. This year, this week, actually, we just finished and successfully uh, launched uh, Turkish verse, for example. We announced earlier this year uh, Barat Box for India. So Sandbox keep growing uh, in different markets and will keep announcing new region of the world uh, over time. And that is like how we keep uh, pushing for like creating and showing the UTD, the two ways. One is like, uh, the really kicking off the creator economy with uh, the opening of publishing. So already 170 experiences, a thousand by end of year, uh, the opening of the marketplace so people can buy and, and sell uh, content from each other. And also uh, looking at how we uh, not only the sand as the, the avatar and the sandbox asset can be used outside of sandbox, but also how sand token is not only used on the sandbox platform, but uh, we are seeing other projects that start to integrate sand uh, for attracting our users because we have a lot of users. So I think that proves that sand uh, has its own ecosystem, the sandbox as a platform as also as an ecosystem. And by continuing to showcase, building, bringing partnership, growing into new region of the world and attracting more users, because it, roughly we have 5 million users with a wallet. It's still, I think, very small. There's a lot of potential for us to keep growing. Uh, we stay positive. Yeah, we were seeing like uh, the ecosystem keep growing. Uh, we have now 230 uh, certified studio. It's still a 10, over 10% 10 growth versus previous quarter, we're seeing, uh, but every time we introduce a new neighborhood and land sale, it keeps selling out mm -hmm. and it's new buyers coming in. So that means like we're still attracting new entrants progressively and uh, we're seeing engagement um, when we launch events like McDonald's uh, in Hong Kong, Charlton Keith is running at the moment, Elvis Presley, mm -hmm. people, uh, over 100,000 users are coming and playing, uh, engaging on those experiences. So um, the engagement on the creator and players keeps uh, going on, and um, that doesn't really correlate with the crypto market situation. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Um, yeah, it's exactly how I define like metaverse, like this idea that you can take your avatar and move across all different worlds, but from any of the existing platform, the technology was not available. And I think by design and because of like the monetization model of Web2 and free to play, there is no incentive for the platform to let their user go uh, on older uh, platform. Originally, like they are competing for their attention, they are competing for the revenue, and they are trying to capture all of that and keep it in a closed garden, closed wall garden environment. We have to build exciting content, exciting experiences, and progressively uh, attract, not necessarily migrate users, it's part of the strategy, but also attract new users who will jump straight into Web3. Because once you are uh, on board with the idea that you own your asset and you can move your asset across application, it gets pretty hard to come back towards like a centralized world where you cannot do that. So I hope is like also over time, true digital ownership will become like, you don't even think about it. You don't mention it because it's just there. And you even wonder like, how can I live in a world before where I couldn't do that? Like today, if I ask you like, do you want to listen to music on a tape, radio tape? Nobody does that. Like how could you even do that before, <laughs> right? Just, just play on my phone, download digitally. So I, we really feel like Sandbox is a, is a creative platform. Like we see the passion that people, who, anyone who tries Sandbox, create an avatar or, or try the creation tool, they become inspired as they see the different experiences and they want to participate and contribute in building that world. And 
having an ownership in that world is also an important part of like being rewarded for uh, participating. Mm -hmm. Why for us is so important to show uh, what what creators are doing to tell their story is because we want people to feel like this is metaverse and technology blockchain. This is not something abstract or, or futurist. It's something concrete that's already impacting people's life today. Uh, and I really invite you, hopefully you have time tomorrow in the afternoon to visit uh, our show, our demo day. So we, we can talk directly to those creators and ask them like their own stories. Yesterday, I, I, had a, I was on a panel at the Crypto Art Seoul. Uh, his nickname on Twitter is uh, NFT Wujun. And I learned that he, he did like agree, agree engineering studies. He discovered Sandbox. He loved the spirit of the community, like the positive emulation of creation. He progressively learned uh, voxel art, sort of like digital Lego, very simple. He created content, he improved his skills and uh, while he kept his job and then progressively he could quit his job. He could start training other uh, students. He participated in contest and he won a contest. So he was showcased uh, at the Crypto Art Seoul exposition. And who he won the uh, contest with, he actually worked with his girlfriend. And the girlfriend is, was his, her student. Mm -hmm. So actually, he, we connected people. Mm -hmm. And that's also something I love about Sandbox, like how we bring people from different backgrounds, origin together, and how they, the thing, what they experience in Sandbox as a creator or the players is actually creating uh, new memories mm -hmm. and, and real feeling, real emotion. Even if it's a virtual world, mm -hmm. what we experience in it, it doesn't need to be amazing graphic. It's just the fact that we connect and we share a passion. Mm -hmm. And so I hope they get married. So that makes a very great story <laughs> one day for <laughs> first uh, married couple, thanks to Sandbox. Yeah. So keep keep that one for uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> if yeah. it happens. Okay. <laughs> But, but uh, you can see, I, I love this kind of story. They are not unique. Like uh, I hear a lot of our creators and people I meet, like I own land, they're passionate about it. They meet other creators, they get inspired. They have a lot of ideas. This is a very positive emulation of what can be done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.